Goog's house. All right. The offense is going to look a little bit different next year. I think Shannon Dawson out. Let's talk about who could be coming in. You are locked on Cougs, your daily podcast on the Houston Cougars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to a bonus episode of Locked On Cougs, your daily podcast on the Houston Cougars. I'm your host, Houston-born teacher and coach, Parker Angel, here to break down all things Cougs. If you're a U of H fan or just a hater, can step by, please be sure to hit subscribe down below. That way you get the latest on the Cougs in your news feed each and every day. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. It's good to see you again. We're approaching 625 subscribers. Remember, we get to 750. We'll be doing another giveaway. We're doing a giveaway every 250 subscribers. So make sure you hit subscribe down below to get us there. And Comment and give a thumbs up on the video to make sure you are entered in to win. If after listening to us talk about uh, Shannon Dawson's exit and who comes in to replace him, immediate thoughts on who could come in to replace him. You got no thoughts of your own. Tell us if you like black or pinto beans with your Tex-Mex. Now, the news of the day broke around lunchtime. I guess it probably depends on when you're having lunchtime. But Shannon Dawson is out. He is officially moving to Miami, uh, much like De- Derek King a few years ago. I think that connection being made across the internet was funny um, because the Derek King experiment didn't quite go as well as I think they wanted it to in Miami. But uh, Dawson is going to go be Miami's offensive coordinator. Dawson spent four years in Houston, uh, first as just the tight ends coach, but then was quickly promoted to a offense coordinator quarterback coaching role. Um Frankly, he was in charge of the last string of games of the 2020 play calling in the last string of games of the 2021 season, in which Houston went 12 and 2, had a very successful football season. Looked like we're building something pretty prominent. Um, And then he was notably also in charge of the play calling in Houston for the first several games of the 2022 football season, in which it looked like all of that work to build something up had fallen apart. Now, um, there are all kinds of internet rumors about what happened at the end of the Memphis game, but something happened at the end of the Memphis game right for the bye week where Houston's play calling shifted in a way that at least started making things on offense seem like they were playing faster and playing for big plays and taking more shots. Um, Houston, I think, felt a little predictable at times play calling before that. Um It has been alluded that Dana Holgerson took over play calling. It has been alluded that that got passed on a little bit, that the duties got passed around a little bit, or that Dana said we need to do X, Y, Z. And while Dawson may have been calling the offense, there was a heavy-handed Dana Holgerson involved. Now, whatever the answer to that is, I do know that Holgerson never publicly said he took over play calling. That publicly was let's let us to still think it was Shannon Dawson. And I do know that publicly Dana Holgerson has commented Uh, numerous times about how there is so much to take care of as a head coach over the course of a game um, that it can be distracting to be doing that and calling a good game. Um, And frankly, if you have a guy doing both things, that's how you have like the most penalized team in the NCAA, which Houston had. So not sure how that gets fixed, but um, I do think, Iman Yagavi is a great pick for that. Um, he's the run game coordinator and offensive line coach that Houston just brought in from Tulane. Now, um, I don't know of any reason that Dawson would not want to work with Yagavi. I know that um, he and Jones, had, the previous offensive line coach, had, were both very, very close. Um, I And frankly, Houston was paying Jones a lot of money, so I guess that that's fair. Um, Dawson was a how mummy guy. Um, and I, I guess in like the delineation of all the like high end passing offenses, um, that's not exactly the same as the leech brand of stuff that Holgerson does. Um, Holgerson does use different things than leech did too, though. So, you know, um, I say all that to say that I think Houstonians were surprised to hear about Dawson's firing, not that they were surprised in a bad way. Twitter erupted with a lot of shouts of glee and joy because they're worried about the same kind of predictable offense that Houston was running with Dawson in charge at the start of last season being that much more predictable 
throughout the first season in the Big 12 and how poorly that could set up Houston for a you know long and successful time in the Big 12. Uh, fair criticism, I think, if Tulane is having an easy time picking you apart schematically, it would stand to reason that coordinators making two and three times as much money would be as well, right? Like that, that I think tracks. Um, but my initial reaction was not quite the uh, tears of joy, but kind of the unsettledness that comes with the unknown. Um, it is February, I'm recording this at the end of the day on the 14th, but it was the afternoon of the 14th when this came out. Spring practices start February 28th. That's very, very soon. And, you know, I know that the 2023 recruiting cycle is more or less out of the way. We got a transfer window in the end of May. I guess it's start of May, end of April. Anyway, transfer window coming up later. But by and large, the recruiting part's done. You're starting to see a couple guys come in the 2024 class, but whoever you bring in should be able to fit right in in that group. That's not the concern. The concern to me is you got to play in the Big 12 next fall. And if you're going to bring someone new in, he and all of his other assistants need to be on the same page in legitimately two weeks. And that's really, really fast. And if you're like, well, is there like, there's a lot of people on Twitter don't get how fast that is to get an offensive staff on the same page. And I worry that unless the keys are handed to Nugavi or unless Holgerson has that much more of a say in it than he le- leads on, which both are possible. I don't mean to say that they're not. Um, Houston needs to make moves fast here. You can't really wait a week and then expect things to get fixed in a week. That worries me. Um, now, am I upset Dawson's gone? Not necessarily. Um, I, I've said on Twitter, you could do a lot worse. You could do a lot better. <laughs> uh, I think Miami is probably going to be saying the same thing in about eight months, nine months. Um, so, you know, you could do a lot worse. You could do a lot better. Um, they, they might be patient. No, Miami's not going to be patient. I lied. Uh, they're not going to be patient about that at all. What I think is interesting, though, is that um, this spurred the conversation about, okay, they got to find someone who is going to come next. And the truth is, there's a couple options, and Houston probably has to go poaching to get those options, with the exception of one. But first, let's talk a little bit about our buddies at FanDuel. Now, we're at the midway point of the NBA season, and it's the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book. That's because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you bet on everything, the money line, the point scores, uh, three points are strained, etc. I'm recommending on Wednesday night, they have the Oklahoma City Thunder favored by 9.5 points over the Houston Rockets. <laughs> I understand that the game has been not close recently, but Houston's played a handful of close games in the last 10 days, and I think that's too wide a spread. I think Houston's going to keep it closer than that, and that's what I'm telling you to do. Um, FanDuel lets you even combine your bets for a bigger chance to pay out with the same game parlay, so make sure you check that out as well. Don't miss the chance to get your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 back in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more make every moment more with FanDuel an official sports betting partner of the NBA all right so I mentioned that there were some poaching options out there the same kind of way that Miami pulled Dawson away from Houston um, as in like guys under contract and then there's one that's not in a previous episode when Cliff Kingsbury was uh, relieved of his duties in Arizona I tossed the question out there does Houston need to give him a call? Not necessarily to head coach, but to come in and be a coordinator or to come in and serve in some role. We know he and Holgerson are close from, you know, honestly, the first time Holgerson came through the University of Houston and they worked together briefly. Um, they both speak highly of one another. Um, Kingsbury is young and innovative. And, you know, for whatever it's worth, I know as a head coach, he had like a questionable record. But he did find Patrick Mahomes in Tyler, Texas, and get him to Lubbock, Texas, not to Austin, Texas, or Norman, Oklahoma, or Tuscaloosa, Alabama, right? Like, he did do that in a way that I think does merit some pats on the back. No no pun on pats on the back. That That's a bad, no pun intended there. Um, but I would be intrigued to know what that offense looked like for a temporary solution, because I'd know that he and Holgerson would be in lockstep. 
um, as far as the offenses go. There's slight differences, but we know they've worked together and had success together offensively. And thus, I think that you could pull those kinds of things off. The other thing I think would be interesting to see there is um, could you get quarterbacks that want the pro coaching experience because of the time that Cliff has spent in the pros or would his lack of team success after like the half of a season that the Cardinals had in Kyler's year. Right. Um, right. Remember like the crazy game winner that they, that uh, Kyler Murray threw um, and like they beat Buffalo bills and then like didn't win a game the rest of the season after that. Right. Like does that, which side of that season or side of the Cliff Kings were experiencing in the NFL, what side appeals to recruits, the winning side at the very beginning or the losing side that feels much longer. I don't know, but I think it'd be interesting to see how that carries with Houston a Houston kids uh, trying to keep them in the city. And frankly, I'd imagine he gets a pro job in a year or two. And so it wouldn't be a long-term solution, but you could try it out theoretically. Right. Um, I think that's worth investigating. I'm not sure I'm worried if it doesn't happen. The two names, um, there are a handful of names, I should say, that I think you want to call. Um, Chris Jackson, uh, he's, I guess, technically just got hired by UT Austin. I'm not positive. Um, spent some time in Jacksonville as a receivers coach. Um, he's rumored to be young up-and-comer, knows his stuff, etc. Worth a phone call. Um, right, worth a phone call. Malcolm Kelly, um, I guess he played at Oklahoma, but he's familiar to Houston because he serves as a GA after a brief stint in the NFL. Um, he's a Longview, I think it was a Longview or Lufkin, one of the two up there, right? Uh, the people up there will be very specific and probably hate comments me about which one it was. Um, but Malcolm Kelly is another young guy that has been around some big time football. He's at TCU right now. And I think A, that'd be a very like understanding guy of the conference. And B, if Holgerson's really going to call plays, it could be a mentoring type role for a young coach that uh, has high promise and frankly could connect with kids that are looking to get to the next level in parts of the you know state that Houston could benefit from recruiting. And honestly, in the meantime, he could coach receivers and the offense while Dana helps out with what he does. Um, those are two younger guys. I think that are currently under contract. I, again, I think Chris Jackson, if I'm reading things right, is actually under contract at UT Austin, not with the Jacksonville Jaguars right now. And then Malcolm Kelly is with uh, TCU. But I think if you'll get them relatively easily because they're positional coaches and be like, hey, we're going to work you towards you're going to be a passing coordinator and work you towards eventually calling plays. And like, I think you can get there. Um, the two that I'm intrigued by that are already calling plays. Um, one is coach Brian Ellis, who's currently at Georgia Southern. He's more of an RPO guy. Um, than Dana has shown to be in the past. That doesn't mean that he wouldn't mesh well. He still is a you know a 10 personnel kind of guy, which 10, 11 personnel is kind of what Houston spent a lot of last season in. Niagavi spent a lot of his time in 12 personnel at uh, Tulane. So all of that means one running back and one tight end, one running back and no tight ends, right? The first digit being the running back, second digit being the amount of tight ends or H-back type guys on the field. Um, I wonder if Ellis could fit in pretty smoothly. Um, he's 34 years old, relatively young, spent a long time at Western Kentucky in two different stints with a brief uh, period at USC where he was the quarterback coach. Uh, coach JT Daniels was there, right? Um, high promise, didn't quite deliver, but understandable, right? Um, anyway, Western Kentucky, second trip around was the OC, um, and now he's the offense coordinator at Georgia Southern. He's a Georgia guy. Um, but Houston's got some Georgia guys in the recruit trail. So can we continue to dig our heels in there? And again, a guy that has promising young offenses um, as a coordinator at Western Kentucky has done very well. And a coordinator in his, again, one season at Georgia Southern, a brief brief time at Georgia Southern, I should say. He's in well as well. Um, worth keeping an eye on him. But the one that I'm saving the best for last here, and I hope it's the best for last, because uh, 24-7, uh, Sports has already linked Jake Spavadol of UC Berkeley, Cal Berkeley, to the Houston job. Um, so let's go through his resume a little bit. Um, he was a grad assistant at Houston, <laughs> uh, familiar enough. Um, he coached with Holgerson, though not on Holgerson's first trip through Houston, but at West Virginia, so they are acquainted and know each other. The offense appears similar in a quick YouTube search. 
um, from his time at Texas State. Uh, Jake Spavadol was the head coach at Texas State from 2019 to 2022. And um, I, I understand the win-loss record is not crazy impressive. He took them from scoring about 17 points per game to scoring in the high 20s in 2021. Uh, the 2022 was a little bit of a dip. Um, but on the whole, I would say the in, the increase in offense was palpable. And on film or on YouTube film, I don't have a whole bunch of Texas State, Texas State tape. Um, on YouTube film, I am impressed by, um, you know, I don't think it's an X's nose thing. I think it's more of a Jimmy's and Joe's thing. It's a Texas state. Texas state's kind of in a hard place to recruit as San Marcos because there's so many great programs all around um, that if you can't get like a handful of key San Antonio kids, you're in a real big problem. Right. And I don't think that would be the problem at Houston. When I look at his X's nose, things we look like seem to be looking like they're going the right direction. Um, he is 37 years old. Um, as of December, he got hired by Cal Berkeley. So you'd probably have to pay some sort of a deal to get him out of that contract. To He's going to be go, go be their offensive coordinator. But he is an air raid guy. Um, he does like to spread it out. And all the receivers that Houston has coming through, I think that could be really, really dynamic. Could you get the yin and yang of him and Yagavi where he's doing the 10 personnel pass game and you somehow weave together Yagavi's 11 personnel run game and kind of put it all together together. I think that could be really, really strong and impactful. Um, 24-7 seems to think that the Dana Holgerson connection that they've got may be enough to get him on at least a trip out to interview with Houston. Um, we'll be following this, obviously, at Locked on Cougs. And frankly, I'm going to try and get someone on with some insight to pay a little bit close attention to this in the coming days. Um, obviously, my buddy Rob Sellers, he... He knows a lot of stuff, and we texted a little bit, but I want to know more. Um, so make sure you stay tuned in. Hit subscribe down below. We'll be talking about the offense corner search. Hopefully not for that long. Hopefully it gets nailed down pretty quick. But please be following us. Subscribe to the podcast. Follow me at Painsworth512, P-A-I-N-S-W-O-R-T-H-512 on all your various social media handles. I'm happy to talk all things Cougar basketball, football, everything in between, the Rockets, Astros, Texans, etc. I got a wall of sneakers behind me as well, if that's what your jam is is thank you all so much for listening to this bonus episode if you did not hear the main episode that came out today please go check the feed the same place you found this podcast uh we talked with andy Patton and uh isaac shade to about how the houston Cougar basketball program fits into the national picture they host locked on college basketball it's a great great listen for a second listen of today though if you've listened to this you listen to that you listen to locked on college basketball already i'm gonna say go listen to locked on big 12 they're doing a lot of great work looking at how the conference is getting reshaped including bringing Houston in. So go make sure you check out Josh in that show. Thank you all so much for tuning in to this bonus episode of Locked on Cougs Day. Locked on Cougs is a proud member of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Go Cougs.